Well, good evening to you all, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. It's Pastor Jay. I speak and I decree the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I pray that all is going well with you, and I pray that all will go well for you. I'm excited to share the word with you today. Uh, we just completed last week a lengthy, in-depth study on the book of Ephesians entitled Walking Through Ephesians. We actually had 25 lessons. It pretty much covered all of the first half of 2023. Well, today we're going to start a new lesson. Uh, I'm not necessarily shooting for it to be a series. Unless the Spirit of God points me in a different direction, I'm simply going to share with you what the Lord is laying on my heart. Some things He's already given me. Some things like today He might give me the day before or the day of that He lets me know that He wants me to share with you. So I believe that the Spirit of God is going to cover a lot more ground because we've been so focused on the book of Ephesians for the first half of this year. I believe the Holy Spirit will balance that out by letting us touch different topics and, and uh, information throughout the rest of the year. So at least that's what I believe today. Uh, when you plan your way, yet yield to the Spirit of God to direct your path, it can go any multitude of directions. So before we begin and before I give you uh, today's lesson title, let's go before the Lord in prayer because we always want to ensure the Holy Spirit is involved in what we're doing. So, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for another opportunity to teach your word with accuracy and simplicity so that the power within your children can be awakened and activated. And that's exactly what I release my faith to occur today, Lord God. I pray that as your word goes forward, it stirs up the hearts of the believers. It causes faith to rise in our hearts. And I pray that we all receive at least one revelatory word from you that we can apply to our lives and experience a divine change. Lord, I pray that my anointing to teach will couple with the hearers and their anointing to hear and that your wisdom and revelation knowledge will flow freely in Jesus name. So Holy Spirit, we give you the floor. Have your way as we position our hearts to receive what God has to share with us today in Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let's get right into it. Today, we're starting a brand new lesson. I believe we'll start and stop today entitled The Not-So-Secret Key to Success. <laughs> the Not-So-Secret Key to Success. And I just want to dive right into it. We're going to read from Joshua chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 6. I'm going to read verses 6 through 9. Uh, for those that might not know, Joshua is the or uh, was the successor to Moses. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. However, Moses was not allowed to lead them into the promised land due to seemingly one act of disobedience. And, you know, that's that's a sobering thought when you look at all the mighty works that Moses performed and the things that Moses did and how Moses stood in the gap repeatedly for the children of Israel to find out that he could not enter into the promised land due to one act of disobedience. That's a very sobering thought. However, that's how God ordained it. And so because Moses could not lead the people into the promised land, Joshua was chosen as his successor and he was tasked with the responsibility of leading God's people into the land that God had promised them. So in verse six, with God speaking to Joshua, letting him know what he was requiring of him. Matter of fact, okay, it's Bible study, right? So I gave you a brief synopsis of what Joshua is about, but let's go up. Let's start at verse one. I was gonna read verses six through nine. However, let's flow with the spirit of God. Let's go up to verse one and let's see how this flows. We'll read verses one through nine and we'll go at it that way, which is really my original intent anyway. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, 
Arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people. Jordan was the Jordan River. That's the river they had to cross before they began to take possession of the promised land. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That's a great promise for you to stand on. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Man, that a, that a teach and preach all by itself. Verse six says, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swear or I promised unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9 goes on to say, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Why? For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The not so secret key to success. And one of the first things the Spirit of God communicated to me as I was preparing this lesson was that we need to redefine what success looks like in the body of Christ. We have been duped into believing that success means the big house, the nice cars, the fancy clothes, the, the uh, six-figure, seven-figure salary. And although there's nothing wrong with those things in and of themselves, that is not God's idea of success. To put it very simply, success in the kingdom of God is simply knowing, doing, and completing the will of God for our lives. See, God told Joshua, you'll have good success because as long as you obey me, I'm going to lead you into my plan for your life. I'm going to lead you into what I've created you and ordained you to do. So although you can have the nice car, although you can have the nice house, that's not God's uh, singular focus. That's not God's main focus for your life. God's main focus for your life as a child of God is that you complete the will of God for your life. Success in the kingdom of God is knowing doing and completing the will of God for your life because many people discover what God's will for their lives or what God's will for their life is yet they don't finish it. Uh, my pastor taught years ago that one of the one of the mandates is to finish well. You know, not just to finish but to finish well, meaning you complete the journey, you complete the assignment, you reach the goal. Uh, you press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You do what must be done to accomplish what God ordained for you to accomplish. So let me say that again. The not so secret key to success. Success in the kingdom of God is simply doing and completing the will of God for our lives, for your life individually and our lives as a corporate body of believers. Again, let me reiterate this before I move forward. I'm not against you having a nice house. Not against you having a nice car, not against you having nice clothes, not against you having nice things. But if you think that the nice house, the nice car, the nice clothes and the nice things means you are successful, you are sorely mistaken. What do you mean by that, Pastor Jay? How do you know that? Well, there are a multitude of examples we can pull from. The first one that comes to mind or the first one that rises in my spirit is the rich uh, Lazarus and the rich ruler. 
uh, that fares sumptuously every day, clothed in purple. Uh, that rich man died and he opened up his eyes in hell. And then to, in juxtaposition to how the rich man lived, Lazarus was a beggar full of sores. And he opened his eye or he found himself in Abraham's bosom in paradise. And, and the Bible says that that rich man, he had his good things while on the earth, yet he did not have salvation. He didn't have a relationship with God. He didn't know God. And so in hell, he opened his eyes. He did not lead a successful life. Yeah, he was rich. He fared sumptuously. He lived lavishly. He had the best of everything. And when he left this place, he fell far short of what God's reality and what God's plan was for his life. I say it again because the Spirit of God has prompted me to do it. Success in the kingdom of God is simply knowing, doing, and completing the will of God for our lives. So how does success come? Well, the not-so-secret key to success is outlined to us in Joshua, and especially verses 7 and 8. Kingdom success comes through faith in God and obedience to his word. I'll say that again. Kingdom success or good success, as the text tells us, comes through faith in God and obedience to his word. Look at what it says in verse 7 and 8 again. It says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do. What does observe to do mean? It means to obey. You observe to do by obeying that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do. That means obey, observe to do according to all that is written therein. For when you observe to do according to all that is written therein, then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Good success is when you complete the assignment. That's good. Good success is when you make your way prosperous as you complete the assignment God gave you. Notice what it says. It says you'll make your way prosperous and you will have good success, which implies if you can have good success, if God promises good success, there's also a bad success. You can have a, a well-paying job, the nicest, the nicest cars, the nicest house, multiple houses, yet your marriage can fall apart. Your health can deteriorate. Your family can ostracize you. A multi, you can be lonely. You can be at the top of the wrong. You can be on the top rung of the ladder and find out nobody else is there with you, and live a lonely existence. Yeah, you got all the money you need, but you don't have anybody to share it with and experience what having that means to you. That's bad success. Good success is when you complete the assignment that God gives you to do and you prosper along the way. Amen. Now, most people here prosper and they think money prospering doesn't necessarily mean money. Prospering means that you're doing God's will and you have all that you need to accomplish his goal for your life. Amen. That's so good. All right, let's go. Uh, when it comes to God's word and we can see uh, that our success not so secret key to success is God's word. He told Joshua, meditate in this book of the law day and night. In other words, he was telling Joshua, meditate in this word day and night. For, for Joshua, it was the Pentateuch. It was the first five books of the law, uh, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are what Joshua had to meditate on. For us, we have to expose ourselves to the word of God. Every day, our Victory Fam, we're in the process of reading through the book of Acts for the month of July. 28 chapters in Acts, 31 days in July. We should read, you know, well, you can try to read one chapter every day. Uh, you can read multiple chapters a day if you so desire. However, you can break it down to at least a chapter a day. If you read a chapter a day at the end of July, you'll be finish with the book of Acts with a little room to spare. And it also gives you a cushion to possibly miss a couple of days and still be able to complete your assignment. Well, one of the reasons that the Spirit of God prompted me to do that is because he knows we need to increase our word intake. You know, he has us praying, Victory Family, about 
his power manifesting. Well, anything God does for us, anything God's to, uh, God does to us, and anything God does through us will hinge on his word. God doesn't make a move independent of his word. God doesn't make a move independent of his word. So if we're not exposing ourselves to the word of God, we are limited in how God can move in our lives. Amen. So when it comes to God's word, we have to do three things, not only three things. These are the three things that God gave me to share with you today concerning our not so secret key to success. Three things. When it comes to God's word, we have to know it. We have to believe it. We have to execute it. You want to say that with me? Repeat that after me. When it comes to God's word, I have to do three things. Know it, believe it, execute it. That's good. When it comes to God's word, we have to do three things. We have to know it, believe it, and execute it. When I say know it, that refers to exposure. You have to expose yourself to the information that is in this book. If you don't expose yourself to it, you're not going to get it through osmosis. You're not going to get it by riding around with it in your car. You're not going to get it by having it on your nightstand next to your bed. You're not going to get it by being on your pillow when you fall asleep. You have to know it through exposure to it. You got to expose yourself to the word. Secondly, you have to believe it. That means your faith has to be activated. Knowing is the ground floor. Knowledge is not how we achieve what God uh, promises that we should achieve. Faith is how we achieve what God promises to us. Knowing opens the door for faith because it creates exposure. However, believing it is when your faith is activated. The Bible says faith comes by hearing the word where well, you have to hear the word you have to be exposed to it multiple times continuously actually before you get to a point to where you believe it. some things we believe automatically some things it takes repetition and consistent exposure to that truth repetition and consistent exposure to that promise before faith is ignited in our hearts you might know god is a healer but you not, might not believe it for yourself yet that means you need to continue to expose yourself to word to word from the scripture concerning healing until you move from knowledge to belief. Head knowledge won't get you healed. Faith will. So you might know that God desires to heal you. You might know that he has already healed you by the stripes of Jesus, but you don't believe it applies to your personal situation yet. Well, the only way you are going to move from knowledge to belief, from knowledge to faith, from exposure to activation is by meditating in that word consistently, by getting in the scripture and meditating on scriptures concerning healing, repeating, repeatedly quoting those scriptures, writing them down, posting them where you can see them so you can get it in your spirit. So faith can be activated. Faith comes by hearing ing a continual action. Faith doesn't come by, I heard that already. Faith doesn't come by, I heard that message a few years ago. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. There's a CD I'm listening to in one of our cars that I've been listening to over and over again. I know exactly what my pastor is going to say. I know how he's going to laugh. I know who's in the background that's going to say something. <laughs> I know the timestamp when he's going to finish. I know when he's going to drop his Bible. I know when he's going to shut it down because I've been hearing and hearing and hearing because the spirit of God told me that there's something in that particular message that's pertinent to my life. So I keep listening. I keep listening. I keep listening and I keep drawing revelation from it. I keep I say it like this. I keep squeezing juice out of it. Amen. Well, that's what you got to do to move from knowing to believing. Now, once you know the word, once you've been exposed to that information, once you believe the word, the activation of your faith has taken place. You need to move into that third step of God's word, which is execution. That's when we implement what we believe. In other words, that's when the works kick in. You know, James tells us that faith without works is dead being alone. So what he's saying is that some people have took that to believe that James was refuting what Paul was teaching about faith alone. James was not refuting what Paul was teaching. 
James was showing the other side of the coin. It's a complimentary teaching to what Paul was showing. Paul was letting us know we have to walk by faith, not by sight. It's by faith that we achieve the things of God. James was saying, yeah, we must have faith and faith without works is dead because people can say, well, I got faith. I got faith that God's going to bless me. Okay, what are your corresponding actions? What are you doing in relation to what you believe? That's what we mean by works. It's corresponding action. It's the, okay. It's what you're doing that aligns with what you believe based on the knowledge you've come into contact with. I know it. I believe it. I execute it. One of the first steps of implementation when you're in faith is confession. For with the heart man believes. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So one of the first things that you will begin to do as a child of God, you'll begin to confess what you believe in your heart. Let's go back to the example of healing. If you believe in your heart that you are healed, you went from knowledge to belief. Now you're convinced that you are healed. You're not sick trying to get healed. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ and you are resisting sickness and disease. Well, then you got to start confessing that. That's your first corresponding action. That's good, Holy Ghost. The first corresponding action to, to faith being activated is confession. Yeah. I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. Therefore, I confess him as my Lord and Savior. That first corresponding action calls salvation to flood my spirit. Glory to God. Well, it's the same for healing. It's the same for deliverance. It's the same for wisdom. It's the same for instruction. Whatever you need. Once faith is activated, your first corresponding action should be confession. Because Jesus is the high priest of our confession. He watches over it to make sure it's accepted and it is activated and it is carried out. That's so good. Thank you, Lord. He makes sure that it is activated and carried out. Why? Because God watches over his word to perform it. So when his word is activated in your heart and when his word is spoken out of your mouth, God watches over that word to ensure that it is carried out in your life. That's so good. When his word is activated in your heart and when his word is spoken out of your mouth, God watches over his word to make sure that it's carried out in your life. Glory to God. That's good. So when it comes to God's word, we have to know it, believe it and execute it. Now, listen to this. I'm going to get ready to shut this down. I'm only going to hold you about 30 or so minutes today. Our success is in God's word. I say it almost every week. It's, a, it's something God gave me that I've never released and I believe he'll have me sharing it with you until he comes back or until we go home to glory. Without God's word, we are walking in darkness. That's why it's so important that we get in God's word. And I know we say, well, I don't have time for the word, Pastor Jay. I, I'm so busy. I, I'm running here and there. I, the kids have me all over the place. I'll say to you what I heard Gloria Copeland say a long time ago. I think she was the first person I heard say that when you say you don't have time for the word, what you need to tell yourself is I don't have time not to get into the word. I can't afford not to get into the word. If you really understood how important God's word is to his will being manifested in your life, you can't afford to not get into the word. Without God's word, we are walking in darkness. Psalm 119, 105 says God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So if you're not in God's word, you're walking in darkness. If I'm not in God's word, I'm walking in darkness, which means I will bump into things that God never or uh, desired for me to encounter. I will hurt myself because I'm stumbling around in darkness and there are dangers around me that I'm unaware of because there's no light shining. There, there's nothing to illuminate my path and keep me away from danger. Without God's word, we are walking in darkness. Listen to this. And I want to show you. I quoted Psalm 119, 105. I want to read Psalm 119, verse 89 to you. And I want to make this statement, this revelation that God gave me to share with you all today. Psalms 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Listen to this. <laughs> That's so good. When he gave it to me, I said, oh, Lord, that's strong. Listen, God's word is forever settled in heaven, even if his word isn't settled in our hearts. 
Wow. Man, did y'all hear that? Did you catch that? Let me let me share it again. Listen to this. And I want you to really listen to me on this. God's word is forever settled in heaven, even if his word isn't settled in our hearts. Oh, my God. That's so good, Lord. What does that mean, Pastor Jay? That means if I'm wrestling with unbelief, it doesn't nullify the power of God's word at all because it's settled in heaven forever. When a thing is settled, that means it's fixed, it's established, it stands firm. So his word is settled in heaven. Faith is the vehicle that takes what's settled in heaven and causes it to be a reality in the earth. So even if it isn't settled in our hearts, it doesn't affect God at all because it's settled in heaven. It's like you order a package from a store, you call the store and you, you pay for the package. And then you say, well, I'm going to come pick it up tomorrow. And you never go pick that package up. You've paid for it. It's yours. The account is settled at the store, but it's not established in your life because you didn't go pick it up. Yeah, forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And it'll stay settled even if it isn't settled in our hearts. Wow. Wow. Listen to this statement. This is good. The level of God's power allowed to operate in our lives. And this is some this look, the spirit of God will say things to you in a way that you don't that you wouldn't say it because he wants to open things up to you. So he used a word that I don't use in my day to day vernacular, which means I had to go look it up. So I'm going to give you the revelation that he gave me this morning and then I'll share what that word means. Many of you might already know. However, I want to share it with you anyway, because that's what a teacher does. A, a, a teacher explains to you what they're what they're discussing. Listen to this. This is what God said this morning when I knew he gave me this word to share with you. He said the level or this was the revelation, the level of God's power allowed to operate in our lives is commensurate to the degree of our exposure to God's word. I'll say it again and then I'll define that term. The level of God's power allowed to operate in our lives is commensurate, C-O-M-M-E-N-S-U-R-A-T-E, to the degree of our exposure to God's word. Now, commensurate means corresponding in size or degree. It means in proportion to. It's synonymous with the term equivalent or in line with. So what that means is, and we're praying for his power to manifest. That's been his, our ongoing theme, Victory Family. What that means is that if you want more of God's power to operate in your life, you need more exposure to God's word. It's the not so secret key to success. There's no way around it. If you want to have good success in life, you have to increase your exposure to the word of God. We can't get away from it. It's the not so secret key to success. I'll share that with you again. The level of God's power allowed to operate in our lives is commensurate to the degree of our exposure to God's word. Wow. There's no way around it. If you want to have good success in life, according to Joshua 1.8, you have to increase your exposure to the word of God. We cannot afford to say, I don't have time. We cannot afford to say, I just forgot. We, we cannot have such a cavalier attitude toward God's word anymore. Why, Pastor Jay? Because he wants his power to manifest. We're praying for his power to manifest, which means it is our responsibility to increase our exposure to God's word so we can know it, believe it, and execute it. Amen. Praise God. Woo. Well, that's all I got for you today. Remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service. And your success is in God's word. It's the not so secret key to success. Get in God's word. Let his word get in you. And the more that word gets in you, the more of his power can flow through you. Amen. I love you all. See you next week. Be blessed in Jesus' name.